Hi. Uh, today we enjoy many uh, great uh, search code demonstration. And, and now uh, I would like to introduce the first speaker of this session, uh, Professor Wang Gongliang. Uh, he is the, now the uh, superintendent of Taitong Mackay Memorial Hospital and uh, executive director of TAMIC and a former uh, president of TAMIC. And his topic is uh, to present the history of radical hysterectomy and why uh, the reason of radical hysterectomy in cervical cancer. Uh, Professor Wang, please. Okay. Well, thank you on the moderator very kind introduction. Um, this afternoon, I will I have um, talk. The topic of talk is um, history of the radical hysterectomy and the why radical hysterectomy in cervical cancer. Uh, first, I'd like to talk to you history of the radical hysterectomy. Uh, it is afternoon and, uh, and also morning. We see a lot of video. Now we uh, review the history. First, uh, on, in 1895, John Clark it performed the first uh, radical hysterectomy for cervical cancer at the John Hopkins Hospital. Next, uh, 1898, um, Austrian doctors, Dr. Wilson, also developed a radical total hysterectomy with removed the perilimental and the parametrian. The point is, you just take enlarged lymph node, not completely remove the old lymph node. The operating mortality rate was 18%, and the major mobility was, uh, rate was uh, 31% in 270 patients, so many, so high a mortality rate. So in 1901, Shota, uh, because uh, due to the atomic approach, mortality rate high, so it developed, uh, tried to vaginal approach. It developed a radical vaginal hysterectomy. But in, in the early part of the uh, 20th century, uh, due to because of the high mortality, uh, morbidity of surgical approach. So radiotherapy became the favorite approach. In 1921, a Japanese doctor, Okabayashi, uh, he modified the version operation. It's extended the section of the parametric. We, the, um, we always um, very care the resection, how to resect the, the parametric. And also, he developed or uh, to do the separation of the posterior lip or the vesicle uterine ligament. And in 1944, due to the problem of radiation resistance and uh, cancer recurrence, in 1945, Dr. Make or uh, he developed a uh, modified voicing operation with intact all the lymph nodes even no large lymph node. And the five-year survival rate is um, certified to 90% for stage one. And um, the point is uh, operating mortality rate, just 1%. That's very uh, good news. But uh, in 1951, Shata just only developed a um, vaginal approach for radical hysterectomy, and not take the lymph node. But Mita, uh, you say, developed two, uh, two stage operation. One, the extra peritoneum lymph anatomy, and then do the uh, radical vaginal approach to ensure that which lymph nodes are not ignored in RVH. And uh, due to, we know that we uh, take uh, very extensive parametric will induce that we uh, think about uh, maybe have uh, maybe uh, morbidity 
especially more plate dysfunction or maybe on um, rectal dysfunction. So Japanese doctor, 1961, Kobayashi, is modified uh, uh, the uh, Kobayashi radical hysterectomy. It tried to preserve the nerve. So it developed a nerve sparing radical hysterectomy. And he uh, focused on present just only pelvic spinal nerve. nerve. But in 1983, another Japanese doctor, Fujiwana, um, he emphasized for this area, the same to this area, um, try to present here in the hypercarsic process, in clear hypercarsic process, uh, like this area. We just preserve this one and this one, but not preserve this one, uh, not the hypercarsic nerve. So in 2007, single for Z, uh, it published a clear, very clear the anatomy of the inferior plexus, and uh, he suggests he needs to preserve his hypercarsic nerve and uh, preserve his pelvic spine nerve and the lead the process in the brighter branch. Now we, uh, this morning and then this afternoon, we see, we see a lot of uh, non-spare radical hysterectomy. I always try to preserve T-shape, T-shape the nerve, okay. And in Taiwan, we also, we review the heat trees. In Taiwan, we do the abdominal radical hysterectomy, also the standard uh, modified from the Okabayashi procedure, uh, also Professor Xi. And in our hospital, we uh, ever publish all the, liter uh, the literature, we have almost uh, 1,000 cases uh, published in Jiwan College in uh, 1989. Uh, the survival rate, uh, five-year survival rate is around maybe uh, if infant negative one B and two A, almost uh, eight, eighty-seven point seven percent to uh, is uh, two A is uh, almost eighty percent, but positive operative mortality rate just zero point four percent. And we care the fistula, that's only two two to four percent, but we are separated. The first eight year and the last eight year, the, the complication is down to 0.9%. Uh, this is uh, because of very uh, in later eight, eight year, we're familiar with uh, this uh, technique. And then uh, now uh, in Taiwan, minimal invasive surgery for cervical is coming. First of all, we think about the uh, uh, history uh, from the Dachan. The Jones report the first case of laparoscopic perilymphal anatomy on early stage in 1987. So um, we developed, we combined the short operation and the laparoscopic perilymphal anatomy in the 1994, also first successful radical vaginal such anatomy. And uh, in 1992, result also report uh, laparoscopy parotidal lymph anatomy. And in the same year, he reported that like, um, first cases of uh, first uh, laparoscopy radical hysterectomy in the with pelvic and the parotid lymphonal section. In Taiwan, we, um, we start uh, the, this kind of the training or surgery introduction of this uh, surgery in Taiwan in, since 1993. I think that Professor Lin, Professor Li, and I, we try to develop uh, this uh, technique. Uh, we are pioneer in Taiwan for the introduction of laparoscopic GYN cancer surgery. And uh, our hospital, we started in 1994 for radical hysterectomy. And uh, we, ha we can review the history of Professor Li. It's uh, um, also have published the paper in uh, from the 1994 to 2005, and a total 139 cases. The fire survival rate almost over 92 percent. 
it squeezes it out. Well, I think that recently they have a better result after 2005, right? Maybe near 100%, right? Okay. So, in 2006, then we can see that salt, we published the first case, a low bar, a cystic radical hysterectomy. And after that, many, many uh, review, review the literature, we can see a lot of the paper about the low bar the radical in severe cancer. So we can see the low, low bar radical tracheotomy, we can do a lot of the, the procedure to send the laparoscope. But it's, it's maybe uh, it's easier, maybe com compared to laparoscopy, it be better and easier. And also can do the robotic uh, assisted laparoscopy, like we can which always point is, uh, is here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always try this here is a point. This is a parametric. We can see the paravascular space, paravascular space, and the this area is the uterine artery and the parametric. It's very important area. And to do this kind of surgery, I think the almost no problems, very, very uh, low, very few. And this is a dissected, uh, separated uh, unit. And uh, OK. Then next, I will talk to why radical hysterectomy in cervical cancer. Maybe Doctor concerned that this is a cervix. Why we don't just do the simple hysterectomy? It's easier, right? Why would you need to do the radical hysterectomy? So we need to take um, this modify and this is extensive to type three radical hysterectomy. This point because uh, because have that uh, early the cervical cancer, early stage of cervical cancer have the chance. Of the uh, to the parametrin, have the parametrin spread of the tumor. Right, we, we, we found this uh, literature, we can see that 30, 350 patients uh, with uh, so early cervical cancer have a 7.7 percent had parametric involvement. But the result, we, we find that the data show that if the patient tumor size less than two centimeter, and no LVSI, no parametric involvement. Is it ready? The papers show that. And now we can review another literature is with the neck dimvenal. Neck pelvic dimvenal, even neck pelvic dimvenal, also have 12-5% had parametric involvement. So it means uh, Different tumor size have the different spread, parametric spread, the chance. So another literature review they said that if the tumor size less than two centimeter, he tried to do the review the and inferior chest to two ten millimeter and the neck dimensional neck dimensional, and also. Without LVSI, just have the parametric involvement risk 0.60%, very low. So, many times suggest maybe small tumor size, limited the depth of the invasion, neck to liver node, and the absence LVSI, maybe can try to do the less radical surgery. And another literature is also reviewed the 200 patients. They have 10% um, had parametric spread, but in analysis, the data find that 
age less than 15 year depth invasion and less than 10 millimeter and, and no LSI on parameter involved is to zero percent zero percent so we know that uh, center treatment type 3 have a lot that we do the um, so extensive that remove the parametrin, significant mobility and complication due to remove the parametrin, include blood loss, bladder and the rectal dysfunction, and sexual dysfunction, and the fistula dysfunction. So we, we think, can we do the less radical hysterectomy? Like this is test three, which maybe you could try to do modify radical. The multiple article. So in 1999, in our hospital, we have published a paper. We compare the retrospect, compare, review the uh, 39 cases, uh, do the um, well treat with a modified article, and also compare to 102 patients with non Baki 1B cervical cancer treated with radical hysterectomy. The result have a significantly less post-operative voting difficulty in the constipation. And all the patients three years survival rate 100 percent. No recurrence or persistent disease was known. So at that time we think about that if less than two centimeter and also less than uh, the invasion less than 10 millimeter maybe can do the modified radical hysterectomy. But after that, many doctors think just enough to less radical, modify. Can we do the class one? Just only simple hysterectomy. And uh, Nantoni, uh, 2012, reported uh, class one versus class three radical hysterectomy in stage one, one B and two A. It's the patient always less than four centimeter. Data is a similar pelvic recurrence. No significant difference in terms of those recurrence and all survival rate. And the real also on revealed uh, on main line about the, is, uh, as how radical should it be? So maybe you think maybe um, uh, Radical surgery make you can do the less radical, especially like this. It suggests maybe simple hysterectomy and the simple trachea can be safe in approximately selected patient, and then maybe cone biopsy, maybe fertility sparing uh, option in those patients with very low risk of parameter involvement. So we maybe suggest uh, it appear. Many women with early stage cervical cancer can be treated less radically than have been done in the past, but need to prospectively try on, on the way for further define the candidate of less radical surgery. So 2018 can also to do the less radical, more surgery is a, this is LRS, is a less radical, is like a, Tracheotomy, correlation, maybe simple hysterectomy. And uh, we compare that the two group. One is LRS, one is uh, MRS. No difference in 10 year disease, special survival. Uh, the data on the, the show that. In fact, associated with increased risk of this is adenal squamous hysterectomy. T3, class 3 disease, tumor size bigger than 2 cm, lymph node positive. But another paper, 2019, the data reviewed the National Cancer Database 2004 to 2015. It said that 1A2 is okay. 1A2, you do the radical hysterectomy or simple hysterectomy, type 1 type the same. But 1B1, 
a 55% increase in mortality for women with one beta, even tumor smaller than two centimeter, two centimeter, less than two centimeter, have some problem. So we just waited the result. Now there are the three prospective ongoing study. One is GOG, one is uh, MD Anderson, one is uh, GCIG. GOG is on um, the inclusion criteria 1A1, 1A2, with tumor size less 2, negative, later and the depth less than 2, 3 millimeter. MD Anderson, 1A2, 1B1, tumor size less than and also uh, no LSY and negative margin. And the uh, CIG, sharp try, to say almost the same, two centimeter. So I, so I made the conclusion. The first is history of the radical hysterectomy uh, from the abdominal radical hysterectomy. Then try to do the vaginal approach. And now we have chip to nurse bearing radical hysterectomy. And the reason is Labasco radical hysterectomy and the lower radical hysterectomy. Second, we talk about less radical surgery, but we need to concern the, the, this is two centimeter, 10 millimeter, uh, no LFSI, negative in the nose in the favor histology and the less than 15% on soma invasion on MI. But however, until the result from the three perspective study are available, patients with early stage stomach cancer still need to radical hysterectomy and the radical trachelomy for fertility consideration. Then the last slide I will show. So now, lab try. Dr. Ramesh, he said that the data show that even less than two centimeters to do minimal invasive surgery, still poor prognosis of, um, of cervical cancer you do, if you do the uh, minimal invasive radical hysterectomy. So, two centimeters is near, uh, we try to do less than two centimeters, is, and uh, we do radical. Minimal invasive radical hysterectomy. It's okay. Maybe uh, uh, I, I think the eight page study where we do the meta um, study. We need to think about at least, and also if two centimeter also need to think about, we do we think we need to modify the technique, the creation of vaginal cup, and the up abroad a uterine manipulator or minimal handling the uterine service, and uh, try to do vaginal approach, coptotomy, and the beginning uh, begin of the specimen. We think about that. At least um, uh, in the future, well, I think the middle study is very important in the study. But we need to uh, uh, keep the very strict criteria and also the doctor experience and the skill is very important. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Wang, uh, for the excellent.